Welcome to this edition of the BRS and Insight. I'm sitting down with interim head men's soccer coach John Sosa. Coach, thank you for joining us. That was my pleasure. Thank you. You guys are sitting at 10 4 and 3 right now, number 24 in the country, coming off a 2 1 win over Culver Stockton. Take us through that match last Saturday. Uh, it was a game that uh, we started kind of slow going down in the score 1 0, uh, but we managed to get back in the score, uh, score a couple of very nice goals, and we were able to come up with a win. And then you played Graceland on Tuesday, a 2 0 win, another game on the road. Talk about that game. Yeah, I think Grayson was a good game for us. We were able to get a couple of guys back um, that had, you know, been dealing with injuries. So that was that was very important for us. I think for the most part, we were able to play good soccer, uh, keeping possession of the ball for long periods of time, which is something that we've been kind of struggling this year. Uh, and we're able to, you know, to, to score a couple of very nice goals and defend really well to keep the shot out. Conference standings right now, you guys are sitting at number four and a win this Saturday clinches a four seed in a home game. How important would it be to have that home game in the opening round? Yeah, I think it's always important to play at home, especially because the guys feel more comfortable playing in front of the, the, their friends, fans, families, and all that stuff, as well as, hey, we understand and we know our field. Uh, and so it, it would definitely, you know, make it special for us to be able to host at home. Um, obviously, we still don't know who it is that we're going to play against because the standings are so all over the place. Anything can happen within the last game of the season. So. Uh, but we're definitely, we're definitely looking forward to, to hopefully playing at home. Senior night coming up on Saturday for your guys. Just talk about your seniors and what they've meant to the program over the last four years. Oh, I think we have a great group of seniors um, in our team that, that have showcased themselves really well on and off the field. A uh, great amount of leaders within the team. Uh, that is always very special to be able to honor them uh, during this day. Um, obviously, for, for me as a coach, it's always kind of like a sad situation to 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 see them go because at the end of the day, you know, they're they're, they're your kids, you know. Yeah. Um, but um, but no, I'm looking forward to I'm looking forward to to hopefully uh, using a lot of the guys during the game and, and just kind of give them a good um, a good fun day for them to just kind of go out there and have fun. You get Clark on Saturday. They're sitting at the bottom of the conference right now, but no gimme in the in the heart this year. Oh, correct. I think, you know, in soccer, soccer is one of those sports that, that anything can happen, and we're definitely not going to take it lightly. We're definitely going to approach the game uh, with the right mentality so that hopefully um, we can come up with a good result. Your final regular season game this year, your first year as a head coach, what have you learned about yourself and this team throughout the year? Oh, it's, it's been a challenging season, but I definitely learned that uh, you know that anything can happen. I, I learned that you know you have to be able to embrace everything that that soccer brings at you, whether it's a you know a bad game, a, a loss, or anything like that. And and I've been able to learn that with work and patience, you know, uh, everything come together. And finally, your your expectations for the rest of the year. Oh, I think we're we have a very strong squad. Uh, like I said earlier, we finally got you know everybody you know healthy for the most part. So I think we we coming in strong to preseason. I mean, uh, to playoffs. I mean, and, and anything could happen. I think we we're strong enough to be able to make a good run. All right, coach. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you. Interim men's head soccer coach John Sosa on the BRS and Insider. A wise man once said, "The world offers you comfort, but you were not made for comfort." You were made for greatness. Discover what you were made for. Benedictine College, where greatness begins. Back on the BRS and Insider, I'm sitting down with women's head soccer coach Lincoln Robley. Coach, thank you for joining us. Good to be here, Dakota. We'll go back to Culver Stockton, a 2-0 win on the road. Take us through that match. Um, it was a good game. Um, it was, uh, I remember it being a bit chilly and a bit windy, and uh, we were up there at uh, Culver Stockton, and um, game started out pretty well. We had a, a, a nice goal where Emily Ambuel um, got uh, Nicole Kelly, who finished it off. Um, we had some Good chances, some good opportunities. We played solid uh, throughout the field. Our midfield were creating really well. Our defense was was strong. Um, Ashley Rehagen was in goal and doing solid work. And second half, about halfway through the second half, we got another goal with that same combination. Emily and Nicole um, hooking up to get a nice goal that put us up 2-0 with probably about 22, about halfway through. And um, we did well. Had I thought really the last 20 minutes we were very good uh, and could have gotten a third. Um, but we want to make sure and get the shutout as well, and, and 
um, shut out a good Culver team and was proud of the proud of the two zero victory. Then you had to go on the road again on Tuesday at Graceland, a one zero yeah. win. Take us through that one. Um, again, we scored in the first half about halfway through, um, and uh, we had a nice build up. I think um, Izzy got to Duke, um, and Natalie's pass got to Anna Roman, who put a nice ball in for Emily Ambuel to go in and finish a one on one opportunity. Um, so we were up 1 0 at half. Um, second half, early second half, we had a few other opportunities that were really good. We hit the post a couple times, we had some near misses. Um, and then uh, Graceland had some uh, corner kicks at the end of the game. Um, they had only one shot on goal, but um, they were kind of pushing at the very end. But again, we just had really strong defense, great performance, and proud of the ladies. And to have two, though, we've had a ton of road games here. I yeah. think we've had, like, of our last seven games, I think six of them have been road games. And um, so we just spent a lot of time on the road and, and um, really proud that we could get a couple more wins there. How important will it be to have that home game before conference starts? Uh, we all love playing at home. I mean, we obviously get to play in front of our campus, um, even more family and friends. With it being homecoming, um, we'll probably see a lot more alums. Um, we get big crowds on the road to, with our following, but anytime we can play at home, it just feels special. And we love it. We're looking forward to Saturday. Conference standings right now, you're sitting number two. Worst case scenario, you finish two. Take us through some of the scenarios that could possibly happen on Saturday. Well, uh, I don't, to be honest, I can't tell you all the scenarios because <laughs> there's an awful lot of them. But um, worst case scenario, as you said, we win, then we'd be the two seed. Um, if things wouldn't go our way, it all kind of depends on so many scenarios underneath us. Um, we'd have to have the team ahead of us. Um, I mean, if they would have tied the team ahead of us, then we'd be co champs. Um, and if they were to lose and we'd be outright champs. But there are so many scenarios that are going on throughout every single place within the conference. What we just want to do is play the best we can play and, and um, get the result in a positive uh, game on Saturday. And then wherever the standings fall, that's where they, that's where they fall. Senior night on Saturday. This has yeah. been another great class for you. Just talk about your seniors. The senior class is unbelievable. I mean, they're hopefully watching this right now. I, I cannot say in uh, enough uh, words, this segment right here can't capture um, all the memories and positive things I can say about them. Um, but uh, Tori Sanders, Aaron Michaels, Michaela Dryling, Kira Losi, Anna Romano, Olivia Myers, Abby Hare, Molly Schmidt, I wouldn't leave everyone out there. I mean, they're just, they're, I've said this, they're sort of like rock stars. I've, I've called them, they're almost like a band. Um, they're all just like superstars that are all different, but together they are just unstoppable. I mean, they're known as the flock and um, they have been since year one. They're just like the flock. You know who we're talking about. We're talking about all those people. It's kind of like their band name and they're just uh, so strong. Um, uh, incredible. I mean, a lot of people have seen the success that that group has had on the field. And, um, you know, I could tell you stats that are just uh, crazy good. Um, but what they've meant to the team as far as bringing everyone together, they're all funny, they all love to laugh, they're all great teammates, um, and incredible students. I mean, their GPA is just amazing. I wish I knew off the top of my head, but collectively as a group, it's probably like 3.6 or 3.7. I mean, you know, I might be cutting short. Sorry, ladies, but it's outstanding. And so leaders, scholars, champions is what we always say as a team. Yeah. And those players, um, student athletes, completely embody those words and are great ambassadors for Benedictine College. Love all of you. You get Clark on Saturday. You talked about homecoming already. What do you know about Clark and what are your expectations for Saturday? Uh, Clark's been having a great season. Um, they've, uh, I think they're like 11 and six. And right now I think they're at the five seed in the conference. Um, we had a really good game with them last year. Um, it, that went our way, um, but uh, we scored some nice goals and played some really good defense at, at their place. Um, I think this is only the second time they've been to our um, to the BC Soccer Complex because they joined the conference like yeah. four years ago. Yeah. And so it's uh, always um, good to have a good impression upon people for a lot of their fans and players to come on campus. So they've been having a really good year. We're going to need to play well and just looking forward to Saturday. And what are your expectations for the postseason? Oh, well, I mean, we just want to we just want to play as well as we can and, and win every single game. I mean, our expectations are uh, to win them all, and it's it's not a matter of um, um, setting a bar too high or too low. We just want to perform at our very best, 
And whoever lines up against us, we want to let them know that, that we're performing at our best and that we want to be proud of our performance. And, um, and we're always um, take a lot of pride in, in who we are and what we represent. And so we just want to make sure we give Raven Nation, let them know that we're giving it our best to uh, represent the school and the program and BCWS and Raven Nation. Thank you very much, Coach. Thanks much, Scotta. Benton College Women's Soccer Coach Lincoln Robley on the BRS and Insider. A wise man once said, the world offers you comfort, but you were not made for comfort. You were made for greatness. Discover what you were made for. Benedictine College, where greatness begins. Back on the BRS and Insider now with head women's volleyball coach Aaron Cooper. Coach, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. You guys had two games over fall break, but you've had a nice break between that and tonight. How important have those days off been for your team? Yeah, we took some time on Monday. Uh, we got it back in the weight room with Coach Chuck and then uh, took some time to watch game film of ourselves. Um, we established some things that we needed to work on and reiterated the, our strengths. Uh, we also decided that um, we needed to come in mentally prepared. It is nice for our bodies, but I think that sometimes when you have days off, mentally we kind of check out. And so one thing that overall as a team we have decided to do is be mentally prepared not only for our matches this upcoming week, uh, but for practices as well. You guys play CMU tonight, number 21. You played them once already. What did you learn from that first match? Yeah, what I really think we learned from that is that we can play with them. Um, I know that both they have improved as well as us. Uh, we're hoping to... Uh, take advantage of some of the things that we've improved on, um, using our middles a little bit more, as well as uh, shutting down some of their key players. And you play Valley tomorrow night. That was a five-setter. What would you learn from them, from that match earlier yeah, on? Yeah, I, I think I think we took some time off in the Valley match the first time we played them. We know that if we take that time off, and we've learned from that and from since then, um, that if we take any time off during a match that it sinks up and bites us, and we ended up tallying in an L in, in that, that column. Um, so I think that there's a little bit of revenge and some tenacity coming back with, with Missouri Valley, and especially it being senior night, that'll, that'll make a difference. Two very important games tonight and tomorrow when it comes to postseason implications. I think the way we have it figured out right now is win one, and that will give us a home game if Evangel loses to see yes. you on Friday night. Yes, so, yes, yes. So how important would it be to have that home game? Oh, we love our fans. We absolutely love our fans, and, and being able to play in front of our fans is is key for us. Uh, not having to travel is is key, regardless of what sport you play. And so, you know, and I think the girls are uh, cognizant of that, and yeah. so they understand the implications and how what it means to play at home. And so, you know, I, I look forward to the game tonight and tomorrow. Senior night, tomorrow night as well. Your four seniors, I can just have you talk about them. Yeah, so we have Abby Brown, a libero, who's been in that position her, her entire career here off and on, um, but has established herself very well, at, not only in our program, but in the conference. Um, she's having a phenomenal year. She's our go-to and serve-receive. She takes a lot of our uh, balls in uh, serve-receive and, and does a phenomenal job. I don't think there's a libero in our conference right now that can pass uh, as well as she does. And defensively, she is um, a go-getter. Uh, she's also the voice on the court. I mean, if you come to any of our games, you're going to hear Abby Brown always. And that's something that the girls look forward to and, and rely on. Uh, Sarah Ramonzai is in the middle. Uh, we call her Mons, and at times I call her our monster in the middle. Um, yes, so she's, she's again, been a four-year starter for us. Uh, there's. There's some emotion behind it for her. She, she wants to go out flaming, and I think that's great. Uh, continuing to use her and her strength on the slide. Um, and then we have McKenna Ketter, who was a transfer junior college with us last year on the outside, and she's been a staple for us. She has played some, made some really good plays against some big blocks in the front row, and we rely on her there. Um, last but not least, we have Lucy Wunderlich, um, a defensive specialist who has come in this year with some great leadership. Uh, she is a go-to. Uh, she is money on serve-receive as well. 
and she does some things that are uh, make some great plays that I would never have guessed that she could make, and then she's making those this year. So we're we're excited about our senior group. You talked about your seniors. You also want to talk about the culture of your program. I'll just have you talk about it and where you think it's at right now. Yeah, I, I believe that the culture of this program is um, something that we've continued to work on uh, throughout my tenure here, and this is where it's, we want it to be. This team really believes in one another. They work hard for one another, uh, and it's it's a fun it's a fun team to be around. So I'm excited about it. All right, coach. Thank you very much, and best of luck to you the next two nights. Thank you. Bennington College Volleyball Coach Aaron Cooper on the BRS and Insider.